This video will review our custom electrolyte advisor. We built the advisor to significantly streamline all aspects of inpatient electrolyte management. It leverages our build of the table of contents as an end page, which is covered in another video available in our video library. From a nursing standpoint, there was always the challenge of when to replace electrolytes efficiently and when lab values were returned. As you can see with my patient test Ruth, the physician has already placed the electrolyte protocol for magnesium sulfate and potassium in order for the nursing to initiate the protocol. Now as a nurse, I'm in the chart ready to take care of test Ruth. The electrolyte replacement tab is yellow due to labs that have been resulted for magnesium and potassium. By hovering on the flag, you're able to see those values face up. When the nurse is ready to replace those electrolytes, she clicks on the electrolyte replacement tab and the advisor opens. As you can see, based on our protocol, magnesium does not need replacing and is therefore skipped to the first actionable item, which is potassium. The flag icon indicates that potassium needs replacing and that the nurse should draw their attention to that tab. There are several criteria on the left for nursing to look at and use as a clinical reference to whether it's appropriate or not to replace the patient's values. Each tab contains the same basic information and we'll start in the top left hand corner. The provider that ordered the protocol is noted here and this will be important for when the nurse places the medication orders. The criteria used to determine whether or not it is appropriate from a nursing standpoint to administer the medications is highlighted right under the ordering provider. By hovering on the green check marks you receive more information as to what meets the criteria or does not meet the criteria. For example, if our serum creatinine was above 2, the green check would be a yellow triangle. Down below, we have other pertinent information, such as urine output and the laboratory values. This pulls in the last documented result, and you're able to click on that and get more information. To the right of the last charted values are spark lines. These spark lines present information in a non-time context that clinicians are able to move their mouse across and see the trending of the value. By clicking on the spark line, a graph pops up that shows the values in the context of time. Now to actually replace the electrolyte values, the nurse is presented with two options. In this case, a 10 and 100 milli equivalent IV solution or 10 and 50 milli equivalent IV solution. The nurse can choose whichever one is appropriate for the patient scenario. In this case, I'm going to select the 10 and 100. As you can see, my no orders necessary has changed to sign orders. And then I'm able to order any lab value that I need following the potassium replacement. When I click sign orders, the flag in both the advisor and on the table of contents will clear upon refreshing. If no action was warranted, either based upon the criteria or another clinical scenario, the nurse could just click no orders necessary and then refresh and the flags would also disappear. I'm now going to sign my orders. Now that I have signed my electrolyte orders, I can go to the MAR and administer the electrolytes as appropriate. By refreshing, the flag has now been cleared. The flag will not reappear until new lab results have been resulted that qualify for the potassium or magnesium replacement protocols. This has really helped improve nursing workflow as well as the time sensitive nature of replacing electrolytes to prevent adverse patient outcomes in the interest of optimal patient care. This concludes the electrolyte replacement video. Thank you for watching.